All right, so as Chad said, we're having some technical difficulties. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I am Laura Shively. I am at the University of Arkansas. Just a little background about what we're doing this semester. Um, we are not um, allowing on-campus events or travel, but we are having our clubs practice. And so um, we'll be speaking a little bit more to that later on the roundtable. And my name is Chad Zimmerman. I'm the Senior Assistant Director for Sport Clubs at the University of Texas at Austin. Um, we are very similar to University of Arkansas. It's only practices and training. Um, more specifically, it's following our state of Texas guidelines. So that is groups of 10 or less with uh, maintaining social distancing. So there's no physical contact at our practices right now. So the rugby club and, and all those other sports that require contact are constantly asking, when can we practice? When can we do this? When can we go to the next phase? But um, that's what's happening at the University of Texas. Um, I'm privileged to, to be with Laura today to bring the round table to y'all, but we really want to make sure that everybody in here has their voice heard or has their questions answered. So for some learning outcomes for today's session, first we're hoping just to get some networking time with all of our club support folks, um, but also understand how other institutions are handling COVID-19 and some maybe maybe some protocols and reactionary um, measures, and then learn some best practices for common uh, sport club administrative issues that we're all facing at this time. So these are the <clears throat> five categories that we'll be going over today. So we'll start with virtual engagement, talk a little bit about screening and testing um, on your campuses, and then practicing and training, special events and travel, we have broken these five topics up into three different uh, breakout rooms, hopefully. But at this moment, if there are any um, additional Region 4 Sport Club Committee members, if you wouldn't mind um, just coming off mute and introduce yourself and what you are at. Hello, everybody. Uh, sorry, I am uh, very late. Um, it's tough being at conference when you have work to do. What a bummer. Um, but I am uh, Lauren Easter. I am the Associate Director at Missouri State University, and I'm the current chair of the Club Sports Committee. Thanks, Laura. Lauren, if you're the only member present, could you just briefly um, introduce the everybody, like what y'all been working on, what the charges might be, and, and if anybody can get involved, how they can get involved? Yeah, uh, so I'll go ahead and uh, introduce some of our current committee members. Um, looks like Ethan's having some microphone issues. Sorry, Ethan. You know, so is AirPods, you know, it is what it is. But uh, anyways, uh, Ethan Pearson is our representative from Kansas, the University of Kansas. We also have Michael Castaneda. Uh, he is a representative, uh, or two now, now that Chad has joined our uh, little group, that is um, from the University of Texas, San Antonio. We also have Jason Lindenmeyer from Oklahoma State University. And then, of course, Laura and Chad, have, I'm assuming, have already introduced themselves. And our uh, co-chair is the state representative, student, student representative for Missouri, who is Paul Harmon. And I think that's everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and we have had uh, quite a, <laughs> a task with trying to get some ideas rolling and be able to share with people what we've been up to lately with our uh, committee, because there's just not a lot going on in club sports right now. So it makes it a little difficult to uh, move forward with things. But I do want to put a quick plug in um, that we are having a uh, survey going out in the next newsletter for Region 4 that we would appreciate if all of you guys could give us some information on what you're going to do for Spring 21. Um, because we're hopeful that some people will be able to lax their travel plans and maybe even be able to do, um, you know, squad, squ squad against squad uh, scrimmages. So we're hoping that we can do that. Um, outside of that, uh, we've just been brainstorming on what we can do to help you guys. And it's been a little, it's been a little sad, but you know, it is what it is. I think that's everything you wanted me to do, Chad. Is that right? Yes, it is. And uh, well, I guess if they, if anybody else wants to get involved, how do they do so? 
Ah, yes. If anybody would like to get involved in our committee, uh, which I highly recommend, we're a fun group. Also, um, again, it's difficult to do a lot of club sports stuff, so it's minimal work. Uh -huh. uh, you can contact me, um, and that uh, contact information is sent out in the newsletter, I think, every time it goes out. But my email address is leaster at missouristate.edu. Um, if you cannot uh, remember that or write it down, just email Matt Beck and he'll be able to get in touch with me. Thank you, Lauren. Yep. Um, to move forward, Nurse of Championship Series, we, we figured we would have a couple representatives in here today from Nurse of Champ Series in some way. I see John Janison here for representing soccer. Uh, there's probably others, but I'm only looking at my first screen. So um, anybody that does volunteer with the championship series, if you just have any general updates that you could share about that's related to sport clubs. I'll go first for you, Chad. Uh, so if you guys have not seen, uh, or know about the nurse skills competition went live officially yesterday, starting out with soccer. Uh, so please share that with your club soccer teams. Uh, that will go until, I believe, November 19th of submissions. Uh, it's nurseskills.com. I'll put it in the chat here in a second. Or if, uh, Zim, you want to throw that in there for me, uh, I'd appreciate it. Uh, following that, Flag Football will ha have one on the same website. Um, it is a big push to do it through Instagram. Uh, so then you got to tag everything in there. You got to make sure your uh, Instagram handles uh public so just things to educate your club teams on and get them involved within that some great opportunities are going to be kickstarting in the spring semester we're really looking at some train the trainers um, and officials development stuff so really looking at train the trainer for those for, for those sports that we're not being able to uh, you know accomplish in the fall like soccer and flag football to Get that experience that so you learn how to uh, train soccer officials on a basic foundational level, learn how to train flag football play officials, especially for those GAs who maybe aren't getting that experience this semester that they typically do, especially a first year GA. Uh, so that's some uh, exciting things that are being coming down the pipeline in January. If you haven't gotten a chance, uh, Dave Peters and Marty Dempsey did a, a series talk live for Region 2 last week. That's going to be going live on the series talk youtube channel uh sometime in the next week that is all i got right now we just i literally just got out of the champ series a uh, monthly meeting at like one o'clock central standard time so my brain's fresh but also fried <laughs> well that's a great update john thank you is there any concrete information you could share about next semester or no uh, no, you know, it's set in stone and you're still waiting, still in the wait and see game of what the spring semester looks like. Club basketball and basketball is trying to move forward as well as we can. And soccer also is uh, kind of just a wait and see uh, time. Hopefully, again, still the same timeline. We'll make the ideas to make some decisions uh, no later than December. Okay. I think Val's email had said um, it's an announcement by January. So okay. the decision in December makes sense. Um, yeah, yeah. So, well, you make a decision. Is make a decision in December and not in January. It's usually the case. <laughs> Sweet. Are there any questions for um, John Janis, or is there anybody else that is here with the Nurse of Champ series that could speak upon a different sport? Chad, I can speak on standards committee. Thanks, Chad. Um, obviously, we don't have a lot of appeals or anything like that going on right now, so we've been taking a a look at our varsity player rule, um, the appeals process, pro players, all that type of stuff. And then also looking at a potential championship series hall of fame um, modeled somewhat like the uh, flag football hall of fame, but more uh, overarching of the entire series and all the sports. So um, looking at all that, that's kind of what we've been working on over the last couple months. That's cool. Is um, for the eligibility standards, I imagine y'all are talking about all sorts of different scenarios, but um, the student would need to be still enrolled to participate, right? Always. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of questions I've, you know, fielded myself as just, well, if I graduate in December, can I play in the spring? Um, I guess they'd have to sign up for a physical education course or something like that. To... Yeah. There's, 
that part of it we haven't really as COVID related, if you will. Is that what you're referencing? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we haven't really dove into that too much, um, but that's something we'll have to take a look at for sure, um, depending on what people are starting to do. But there is, you know, there is this little lag time that we've had that have gone through the uh, appeals process when people graduate, you know, say in one, uh, if they're on the uh, quarter schedule and they graduate the quarter before, you know, and they're not enrolled at that period of time. So we've had some of that going on already. Um, but we'll have to definitely take a look at COVID and what does that mean if we're, um, if. Yeah, yeah, I mean, just to piggyback on what McKinsey's saying, it's just, it's not years. In theory, it's participation at the tournament goes to your year. So if you don't play in anything this year, you still, you still retain all your eligibility. It's, not, you know, yeah. you don't lose a year. Um, it's just how long are you in college? Mm-hmm. Sweet. Thanks, y'all. Any questions or anything else regarding Nurse of Champ series? All right, cool. And then we just want to open up the floor to any other region wide sport club updates. If you are a volunteer with another sport governing body, or if you have um, anything else to announce or a really big question you want to get off your back now before we get into breakout rooms. How's the time? We'll move on. Um, so let's see, Laura, I don't have, do you have host capabilities yet? All right, we have 49 people in here. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> we will, determine the best method uh, to get everybody's voice heard in 49 people rather than breakout rooms. But we will continue to move through this round table. All right, so we're gonna start with virtual engagement, um, just running through these questions. Um, if anyone else has any additional questions, feel free to put them in the chat or just unmute yourself. Um, but the first one is, are you providing virtual trainings or educational sessions for your clubs? If so, what are some of the topics you're covering? What are some of the methods you're using? I'll go ahead and go um, while everyone is thinking about what they're gonna say. Um, <laughs> come on guys, this is the best we can do for our regional conference here. Um, so at Missouri State, uh, we're in a, a very odd situation that uh, we're offering all of our student organizations and club sports to participate as normal. Um, they're allowed to do their practices uh, as long as they can gain space. Now, uh, note that that is obviously limited because of our um, athletic spaces being used at different times and in different ways. but. It was something we talked about in our Missouri, um, State of Missouri meeting that I know the people at Northwest um, University, they're getting a lot of um, uh, feedback from their students that athletics are starting to practice. Why can't club sports start to practice? And so within our state, um, you know, I don't know if it's politics, I don't know what it is, but we have a very lax um, policy and restrictions going on. And so I know our clubs are looking to travel and compete next semester. And so that's part of our questions in the survey I posted in the chat, a quick plug there. Um, but I know that uh, over the past um, semester, for those who chose not to practice, we have been using the uh, system of Canvas Link for all of our virtual offerings. And so people will make a YouTube uh, channel and post uh, virtual practices on there that maybe somebody who is in athletic training or health and uh, 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 health and something promotion um, that they have developed for the team. So we've been using Campus Link this semester if those uh, student organizations have not been practicing in person. Hey, can you guys hear me now? Yay, sorry about yeah. that. I, have a, I don't know what was going on with my mic there for the first 20 minutes. I was trying to introduce myself, but I couldn't say anything, so. 
Um, so for, uh, for the University of Kansas, um, we do our monthly leadership meetings. Um, and so we are still allowed to practice and not compete as a, as a few people stated here. Um, so we do our monthly leadership meetings still that we've moved virtually that we would normally do online. Um, and for our last one, we started using the uh, Step Up program. Um, so I was curious if more people were using that. I had not heard of it really before this year. Um, but like our first our one we did last month was over um, hazing and like how to uh, hazing prevention. There we go. Um, and so they have a few good topics that I found on their website. So I was just curious if any more people were using that or if they've used it in the past and what they kind of thought about it. Ethan, did you say that program was called Step Up? Uh, yes, it is stepupprogram.org is where I found. Um, and they have some PowerPoints and some videos and different leadership development. I'm actually not 100% sure if they're still active. I just came across it a few, um, like last month when I was looking for stuff to talk about. So, Ethan, have you looked at contacting like your sorority and fraternity life on campus? Resources that they provide for hazing? Um, so yeah, we do have, I actually met with our, after I did that presentation, I met with our um, student affairs guy. I can't think of what his actual title is, but his job is just working with hazing prevention. Um, and so I talked to him and I think we're gonna have him come in next semester and kind of uh, and meet with them and go over their stuff. Um, I, I didn't think about having him come in when we did it by ourselves last month. I was a little late on that. So um, probably next semester, I'll have him come in and meet with the clubs um, and go over some of those programs. But I've also talked, um, thought about doing like, so we use uh, SOFAS accounts, student um, organization fund banking accounts on campus that we constantly have questions and confusion over. So if one of the development sessions, I was just going to have SOFAS come in and kind of talk to clubs about how to work their accounts and best ways to keep track of their fundraising and all that stuff. So there's just a couple ideas that we've that we've gone over. Ethan, is this what you're talking? Does that look familiar? Can you see? Uh, that? I don't know. It's a step up via leader oh. facilitator guide. Yes. Yep. That's yeah. it. Yeah. This is um, we did this in 2008. Oh, okay. So it's a it's a it's a pretty old program. We did that. A, um, we did it as student affairs, like training to become facilitators for this for our clubs. But I never used it after that one time. So because <laughs> sure. we didn't find it to be all that helpful. Um, okay. I mean, I'm sure that for the, maybe it was the trainer, the training that we got to be facilitators wasn't that great. So I did not feel confident in facilitating it. I think the program, because they were doing it as a bystander training um, yeah. program. So I think the program is really good, but I think the way that they train the facilitators isn't all that great, or we just didn't have a good trainer. Hmm. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I didn't know much about it. I just kind of came across it and they, they had some good resources in a PowerPoint that I use. So yeah, I mean, we, we plan on kind of just taking it and making it more applicable to sport club officers themselves. Um, so yeah, it's just a good good place to start. Another resource regarding hazing prevention and education um, is stophazing.org. And they have a bunch of good information, statistics, different resources that you can take and modify for your own. Um, I know like, I think there's 13 campuses, maybe more than that, maybe 20 campuses that belong to what they call the hazing prevention consortium. Uh, your school might be one of them. I, I'm not sure, but um, that's another resource there. And Ethan, is that, is that part of your job duties to provide that kind of education? We outsource that to our uh, Office of Student Conduct. Oh, um, yeah. So we do monthly leadership development with our officers. So we can really talk about anything. Hazing prevention just seemed like one that, um, that I at least could go over that PowerPoint with. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So we do lots of stuff. We do like um, budget stuff. In the past, they've done... Um, Work, resume building workshops. They've done a lot of different leadership programs. So we, we try to switch it up. We were working with a different group last year that did some of our trainings um, and I'm blank on their name off the top of my head. So we're just trying out some different ideas.
All right, so we have um, since figured out the breakout rooms, we've got host capability. Um, Chad was able to share the link to today's slides in the chat, um, so you'll be able to access these questions. Um, but we're going to finish up this virtual engagement question, um, and then Chad, if you'll click to the next slide, but we also have, um, you'll go over screening and testing as well. Um, we'll give you about 10-ish minutes to go over these two topics. Um, and then we'll come back together as a group. Laura, that's um, just the first two virtual engagement and screening and testing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks, sure. Um, I'm in a breakout room room one. I can go. Do should we check? Should we bounce in? Or should we you muted yourself? I wouldn't. Word. We're going to host this mini breakout room of the people that don't go to a breakout room. Um, I'm going to start a timer. We have seven minutes on this one to get caught back up. Um, We could also, you could also broadcast the questions just in case people aren't able to open that link. Or like if I type something to everyone right now, can everybody see it? Uh, I can send a message to all of them. What would you like me to say? I was just gonna like copy and paste each of the five questions that we have for these two topics. I think it only appears for a second though. So I need to do a question at a time or something. I'll just say, as a reminder, here's the link or whatever. Mm -hmm. We're on slides, whatever slide numbers that we're covering right now. Did you go to the NURSA, um, what Futures Four Clubs looks like earlier? No, I've had meetings all morning. It was pretty interesting. Um, hold on, let's see. Okay, cool. Sweet. Stays up for a little bit. It's still up right now. There, it disappeared just now. Um, it was pretty interesting. So it was a Stanford director Alex Aketo, you've probably seen at Nurses Stuff before. And then it was the William & Mary director, um, Linda Knight. I don't know if you've ever seen her. I've never seen her before, but I've seen Alex before. Um, so they just talked about basic, the impetus I think for them wanting to host this was that varsities, varsity athletics had been cut at their two schools, uh, mm -hmm. or, or many varsity sports, not completely. And so- but um, Permanently. Permanently. So like, I think Stanford said it was 11 sport or 11 teams in eight sports. And now, and their rec is under athletics. Gosh. So I think they're just battling all sorts of, all sorts of battles with what that means for them. Cause they, if they're out of varsity sport, they probably almost automatically devote to a club sport at that school because it's athletics. So it's like you don't even have a choice if you are going to take them or not, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then if it, they were talking about like if it duplicates the sport, like if you already have a club baseball team and baseball gets cut, the varsity kids just join your club team or do you have two different club teams? Um, most people are like, it's just one club team, but a lot of varsity athletes were transferring, I guess. Um, Boise State had something similar. So it's mostly talking about like, what do you do with varsity sports? But I thought there was a bunch of topics that they didn't go into yet that they could have. Hmm. Interesting. So are you able to do breakout rooms? 
Um, only the host is, and so I made you the host so that I could do the screen sharing. That's perfect. I'm just trying to think about how do we, uh, how do we do, um, the rest. So we still will have practice training, special events and travel. We can always put practice as its own because that's its own. That's really only anything people can do right now. Yeah. Let's do practice on its own for like the next eight minutes and then we'll do another eight of events and travel. Yeah. And then state breakout rooms. Um, we can do different rooms. We could just do, we could do the seven different rooms and see what that, what happens there. I don't think anybody's here from New Mexico. Okay. We can do that. I think Jonathan and I will be by ourselves in Arkansas at that time. Oh, I see. We enjoy talking to each other. <laughs> no, let's keep it out of this. Let's keep it out of this. Keep it out of this. That's why I did um, that. I, mean, there's, I don't think there's a ton of Louisiana either. Yeah. But um, I'm going to have to ask people to put the state that they're in. <laughs> I don't know where these people are from. Or can you, are you able to make the breakout rooms open, like open to join? I, I don't know. Give everybody a one minute warning text if you could. And then, well, I guess it already gives you a one minute warning when we go to close them. But, yeah, whatever. It'll take a minute for everybody to get back. Um, let's get through practice and training next. And then you and I could take that time and still figure out the breakout, the next part of the breakout. While you're presenting practice, I can always mess around with it because I have to reopen practice rooms anyway. Am I, am I doing practice? I believe so, yeah. And then I do the next two. And then while you're presenting state breakouts, I'm working on that. Yeah, we probably should mix it up. Okay. Take it on our feet. I've given them the, the the closed breakout room, so they should be all coming back soon. Sweet. You still see my screen, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Here they come. Do you want to before I? move into practices, we'll have everybody change their name. Yep, it looks like we still have a couple breakout rooms still discussing something. So um, just like one housekeeping item before we move on, if you haven't already, you can hit the dot, dot, dot on your picture and change your name to include the school that you are a part of. Um, we will be using that in a breakout room um, here shortly. Um, but before we move on to any of the other topics, did any group have anything of note that they wanted to share to the larger group, either on virtual engagement or screening and testing? Seven, uh, all five of us, uh, we, are, we are not conducting any screening uh, and have been fortunate enough to not have any uh, major outbreaks of COVID. So that was kind of, that was nice to know uh, that other schools are not doing that as well, uh, being from Missouri. Awesome, thank you, Lauren. All right, Chad. All right. Into our next topic, uh, we're going to focus on practice and training specifically for the next couple minutes. Um, so there's just some questions to keep in mind for your discussions, but let you know anything that you have in mind, please do feel free to bring up. Um, what restrictions do your program have in place for club practices and training? 
Does your program verify attendance at practices? And are coaches and instructors allowed at practice? So some food for thought to get your discussion started. But again, this is a focus on practice and training. These are different rooms in the first time, right? Mm -hmm. Nice. Look at networking. Mm -hmm. All right, I started a seven minute timer. Okay. Um, I'm gonna need more, when, so when you're introducing the breakout rooms, if you could take it, you know, as, as much time as you can. Do you know For what- the state? Yeah, so I have time to actually get them in the right, right ones. Yeah, I can um, ask for just a general summary of all of our thoughts. And I have a couple of thoughts that like I can just share myself. I so sure. if you just uh, want to, um, I don't know, give me a, a private message or something like that, let me know when you're ready. Okay. Do you know where Southwestern University is? Georgetown, Texas. I'm sure most of these I can just assume Texas. Do you know where NW is? NW? Yeah. NW. Uh huh. Just the letters NW. Um, I'm thinking it might be like Northwest Vista, which, if that's the case, it's Texas. Is it Alamo College? Do you know where Hutching is? Hutching? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's her last name and they didn't put one. Hutching. Wisconsin Stout. Hmm? Kyle is it Kansas. Kansas, Southern. What about you? A UH is Houston, Texas, Texas. Nobody. Texas. And I guess the ones that I don't know, SHSU. Sam Houston, that's going to be Texas. Texas, Texas. UHCL. Houston, Clear Lake, Texas. Wow. Texas, Texas. St. Ed's is Texas, yeah. Texas. Rice is Louisiana. Correct. No, Rice is Houston. Oh, well, it's going to all in the same one. Wow. There's a lot of Texas here. I mean, we all knew that that was going to happen, but um, essentially the people who don't have their school, I'm going to put them in north because otherwise it's going to be like 75% south, 25% north, just so you know. Got it. Kind of like soccer. Hey, I was looking forward to having Region 4 soccer, but now I don't know if we'll... If, um, I should have asked this yesterday, but if we do end up having some sort of regionals, are you going to re-ask for bids? Because I don't know that we'll be able to host. Yeah, we're going to have to, and that's, I, I just don't see it happening. I don't see the, logis the logistics of it all happening. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> I just, we'd have to find new hosts for everything basically and work backwards from there and still try to get, you know, teams to play X number of games before a regional and. It might be worth see. having, instead of having leagues, just having a, you know, I don't know if a regional tournament is the best solution, but like some sort of tournament that, at least for soccer, that you could opt into. Uh, I agree. I think basically we should just try to boost the volunteers of each league and help each league host a championship, essentially. 
And then if there is a postseason at all, I think we just go straight to nationals and each league champion go to nationals or something like that. I agree. Um, yeah, I don't think we can go the full size that we've been going. We have two and a half minutes still. You think people are still talking about this? I don't know. Am I able to, I'm only able to chat with you. You can change it to everybody. Oh, because I'm the only one in here. I just sent them all a message. <coughs> Are you able to do polls? You have to put that in beforehand. I think you can still do it during, no? You can, I don't know how. Oh no. But how much time do we have left? A minute and a half of the seven minutes, so. So wait till seven minutes is up. Yeah. Looks like there's at least 12 people in the 15 total viewers, so you know, someone's looking at it. That's on average one. Oh, sweet. Yeah, people are using it. Anonymous coyote, anonymous dragon. A bunch of other animals like I can't recognize. Hopefully people aren't skipping ahead into the next two. So you have the next two, right? So you'll just conclude this and then I'll introduce the next one. Okay. So is Matt and Jonathan just like running around to all these different Zooms this week or what? I, I'm not sure. I'm sure the only ones that are difficult are... No, he's round tables. He said that this one, the reason there is a mix up is because Lauren was the uh, host still. Oh, so we could have, well, if we didn't know that, we could have just asked Lauren, but she got here late. Yeah, that's all good. I mean, I'm sure that they have a lot going on. All right, you're good to release them. Release the dragon. Done. Black rum. Haven't had that in a while. Well, the good news is that people aren't leaving immediately. Yeah, we got 40 people still involved. 30 minutes in, 40 minutes in. Mm -hmm. We'll still have to be quick with this next round again, too. Mm -hmm. Here they come. Hey, Dylan. Hey, bud. Those new white glasses? I rotate. I got a few that I rotate depending on what I'm wearing. <laughs> Gotta have that fashion. Or whichever's the first pair I find in the morning. Dude, I was uh, looking through my photo albums the other day. I looked through Tulsa Regional Soccer. What a time to be alive that was. That was sweet. I don't know if it was, it was muddy. Mario's. What? It was muddy. It was muddy. <laughs> I think it was more fun for us than the teams, probably. That um, entire tournament has shaped how I bring and pack for every extramural tournament since. <laughs> well, shoot, were you, Dylan, you were at 2013 Tech Football. That was the worst thing I've ever been a part of. I was just going to say, that is the one Agreed. that Agreed. <laughs> I think Jared kept me reffing all night because he wanted to steal my sleeping bag for the rest of the night. <laughs> Never forget. Um, all right, stay on topic. Um, practices and training. Does anybody have any um, concluding thoughts from their group or questions that were, were really well talked about that you want to bring up to everybody else? Not really, a, but just it's just interesting in our breakout rooms how it's so varied. 
as it always is, right, with sport clubs that everybody says sport clubs are different, you know, every at every university, but how we have so many that are like, we have absolutely no events to we not that we don't have restrictions, but every club is practicing every, you know, as long as they take attendance and stay away from each other, basically, they can do any sport they want to versus nobody can do anything. So it's just, it's just kind of a weird dynamic to try to have to navigate even if our clubs, like my clubs at TCU are like, we want to travel, we want to travel, we want to compete, we want to compete. And it's like, who are you going to compete against if nobody else can compete? So we're kind of having a lot of those discussions. Mm -hmm. uh, state to state or just region to region? I mean, I know Texas is quite large, but are you thinking that that is, uh, you know, based on states or just where you are in what county? I know in our breakout room, I think um, most of us were from Texas. So, I, and there was some, the, and she, we had that variation of some are doing more, some are practicing and staying away, and some are doing nothing. So, um, I think it just varies by what the university is comfortable with. I feel like in Texas, because it's it's very different everywhere here. So, and I could be wrong, but that's what I think. Uh, it's definitely different. In my two breakout rooms, I got to speak with three different Houston schools, and even within the three Houston schools, <laughs> they're all very different in what they're doing. It's, you know, that makes it really hard across the entire state to figure out what we're doing and across the region, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the next few topics Laura's about to introduce will probably bring uh, much of the same with that, but I think it's interesting because it has to deal with so many different things. So first, what are your state guidelines and what's permissible there? Next, what are your campus guidelines? But not just that, how, are, how does your campus treat sport clubs? Um, if they're sponsored student orgs, they're going to be treated one way. If they are uh, not student orgs at all and they, they just kind of exist within your department, they're going to be treated another way. And again, as you could see, even in the same city, um, there's not necessarily a standard uh, or a, a protocol yet. So maybe we'll establish one in the next 20 minutes. I don't know. But Laura, can you introduce these next few topics? Yeah, sure. So the next uh, breakout room, we're going to discuss special events. This includes any kind of competition on your campus and then also discussing travel. And I'd encourage you guys to really discuss not only what you're doing now, but what if you have any info on the spring, um, what that might look like. Um, but we'll give you about the same amount of time. Um, we'll do breakout rooms again. Are these different ones again? Mm -hmm. Just wondering. I was putting six again, but I figured it was randomized. Um, I only started a six minute timer for this one because looking at the clock, we're only going to have like maybe five minutes to do state breakout. Exactly. Hey, Shandon, are you still listening? Shannon, a student with you? That would be my graduate assistant. <laughs> He's logged in. <laughs> that counts as attendance these days, doesn't it? <laughs> we ran the start of the year virtual thing. And it was all well intended and good ideas, but like it was tied to a scholarship competition. So we were giving money away. So people were incentivized to show up to things. And besides maybe like a very, very small handful of people that were actually interested in each section. And I'm saying like maybe five people. Um, the other 15 or 20 that would show up to every session was just there to get the attendance to qualify for the money. Yeah. It's like, even if you have something that's like really, really interesting, people are really going to go and hope for it. It's like, does it match your schedule? Well, something else comes up. It's impossible. To... But then we get 50 people in a regional breakout room for sport clubs, which I'm sure we've never probably had before. So. I honestly expected like 10, 15. Yeah, but I think. I think there's that many from Houston as well, I'm hearing. <laughs> well, I know in Missouri, so I haven't been to the last couple of Region 4 conferences, but I know Missouri, 
it was probably about 20 some people. And then the last three have been what? Tulsa was last year, A&M, College Station was the year before that, maybe? I've never been to region. No. My uh, boss is very involved in the region, so somebody's got to stay behind and run things. <laughs> well, That's always an interesting chance. dilemma there. This is my chance to get involved. Yeah, you're getting your name in front of everybody in the region right now. Mm -hmm. NRGA last year was the region four leader, so. Who was that again? Katie Harmon. Oh, yeah, Katie was great. What's she doing now? Oh, I'm not sure. But she is bouncing around. I think a lot of people who graduated in the spring are still trying to figure that out. Yeah, definitely. I had one, my cousin was a finalist for our facility job. We didn't hire it when we had finalists. Like we were ready to offer it somebody and we just couldn't fill it. So he's been uh, applying for a bunch of different stuff. Some have popped up. Florida State had a facilities job pop up. Um, Connecticut, he applied for a job there. Crazy to me that um, <clears throat> GA positions are already being posted. I think it's some one of those things where like the funding's already there. It's tied to like either the education department or to the rec department, and it's like not going anywhere, so they're able to do it still. But do you have a GA? Nope. I was one of the last GAs at UT, and I don't think we'll bring them back maybe ever, or at least not for a long time. Not under the current leadership. It's too difficult at UT. There's too much politics to it because you have to. We're not we're not really associated with a campus like an educational department on campus. So, what are we looking at for time? We have two minutes of the six. I think we can just do a one minute warning right now, and then is it a minute that it gives them or thirty seconds that it gives them once you close them? It's uh, another minute. Okay. I'll just say a minute and a half. So in thirty seconds, we'll do the. One and a half minute warning. <laughs> There's one thing that I am is very accurate. I do think if we had the bandwidth to do some things, like all these roundtables would have been really, really beneficial to organize at the start of like delegating people work and creating almost like a spreadsheet of who can do what and. I wish we would have thought of having each, like requiring the entire committee to come and then we could, they could run a breakout room. Yeah, I was actually like, it's kind of funny that you and I got voluntold into this. Like Ethan seems willing to lead it and I don't know about Michael. Well, you volunteered and then you're like, well, Laura can help me. <laughs> well, I volunteered because I, we had, I submitted that other presentation. Mm -hmm. Seems like Lauren didn't want to do it. Well, I'm sure she's very busy. All right, close it. You're introducing this one, reintroducing this one, yeah? Yep. And then I'll wing it while you organize the breakouts? Yeah. Looks like we got one breakout room. Let's come back. Hey, Brooke Bylan, NW. What what school is that? Just for clarification. Uh, sorry. Let's see. Northwest Missouri State University and. Uh, yeah, Northwest Missouri. All right. Thank you. Yep. We were going to put you in Texas, so I'm glad that you clarified that. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a lot of Texas people on here. <laughs> Isn't that always the case? All right. Welcome back. So um, just like we've been doing the past two ones, does anyone have anything to, of note to show?
or to share, excuse me, especially if you've found a way on your campus to host events or and or have travel. Well, I wanted to uh, say I was in the middle of a sentence and I got rudely kicked out of my breakout room. I don't know what Zoom is doing, but <laughs> Um, but uh, Mary Ellen and I were actually talking about uh, their, uh, she's from private school, TCU. They're being told the program and uh, we're a state school, but we're being told the same thing that we're a business. So we should be offering what we can. And I find it very bizarre for the time and era that we're in, but that is what our university is being told. We have uh, team sports for rec sp uh, intramural sports this year. Um, we're about to start basketball indoor and we have group fit happening. So I just think it's, you know, once again, reiterating how weird it is from school to school right now. It's just so bizarre. So with that being said, uh, TCU and most state are looking to travel next year and host events. So that's, that's what my point of that was, yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome, anyone else? Has anyone hosted a competition this semester? <laughs> Chad McKee. It would be beneficial for us to hear from you, Chad. Um, could you speak about maybe some different protocols that were put in place to host some of your events? Um, I'm Chad McKenzie with the city of Round Rock. Um, we've hosted uh, the Nursa soccer tournament and Nursa flag football last year and um, hopefully Again, we'll see. Um, and other sport club events have been at our fine facility here, but uh, um, our city and our, our mayor, our county is uh, very progressive in the sense of we're open back up and we've been open. Um, kind of a lot of what I've heard in the breakout rooms, the things that you guys are going, by, going through on campus is what we dealt with back in um, April um, when we opened back up at, um, really a May 1st, we started having um, folks back in our facilities um, and we've gradually, um, we've gradually increased that based on the governor's Open Texas report and how we've done things and basically modeled our facilities like gyms and exercise facilities and the percentages of what we can have. And then um, the events, uh, the tournament operators or um, adult recreation or adult league type stuff is kind of the guidelines that we've been uh, working through. Um, our mayor has been um, all about us trying to get events um, to happen and we've done that um, I would say 99% on the um, youth level. Um, we've had maybe one adult, two adult events since we've opened back up um, for as far as events. Not a lot of travel, it's mostly local, mostly Austin area. Um, we're just north of, of Austin. And, uh, but most of, most of it's been around there. So um, it's been interesting, um, you know, as far as our facilities go, you know, we have the, the cleaning and the signage of the, uh, you know, we have a, a mask requirement inside our facilities if you can't social distance. Um, outdoors, you can social distance, it's a 67 acre um, field complex. So the, the folks that come to watch their, their kids play tend to find ways they can spread out and not have to wear a mask. And so that's, that's occurred. Um, we've run into problems. We've been all over the Statesman and everything as well. Um, our local newspaper for, for different events, but um, you know, we feel like we're doing it in a safe way as we sit here now, I've got um, a volleyball game happening between two parochial schools that are playing in our facility right now. Um, and so we've been able to do um, a lot of different events based on that and really putting the responsibility on the tournament operators and making sure that they've got plans of how they are um, running their events and their protocols. And then us on the facility, ours is, it's pretty easy on a facility side of just making sure you're cleaning and getting all your touch points. Um, we've removed a lot of our touch points, so that's easy for us. Um, you can walk through our facility without touching anything, honestly. And so that makes it easier for us. Um, but uh, um, that's kind of what we've been doing. And, and like I said, I, I think we are hopefully uh, what we're doing now, you all will be doing in five or six months, because that means that you'll hopefully be doing events at our facility again. And that's what we want to have happen. Do you have any sort of roster limit 
for teams that do come in? We do not. Cool. Thank you for sharing, Chad. I think that's really beneficial for us to hear. Um, is there anybody that has traveled this semester? State's uh, lacrosse team has traveled, and we have hosted one lacrosse uh, competition. How'd it go? Uh, it went really well. It was we were a little caught off guard by it. Uh, they scheduled the game, but then <laughs> they didn't tell us, so we had to throw together a lot of guidelines very quickly. But essentially, it cost them a lot of money uh, that they normally wouldn't have to pay with having to do staff uh, temperature checks. Um, paying for uh, all the cleaning uh, supplies. So it went well. The team came. I, I can't remember what team it was. Um, off the top of my head, I have to look. But it went It went well considering uh, it was the first competition we had this semester. Oh, par for the course. Hey, we got a game tomorrow. Um, all right. So it's about 3 o'clock. But if you are able to stick around for a couple extra minutes, that'd be great. If you have to run, you have to run. And we'll see you at a session in the next two days. Um, but Laura has organized us into breakout rooms accordingly. I think we're basically going with Region 4 North, Region 4 South. Is that right, Laura? Yeah. And we'll spend a couple, if you see on the right-hand side, the discussion points, basically a summary of what we've discussed, but maybe a little bit more localized so that maybe you can collaborate with the school in your state or in your closer to you in the region. So uh, we'll spend... I know we only have about three minutes left in the hour, so we'll spend about five minutes in here. That sounds good to everybody. I will say 